Hey, what's happening everybody? Welcome back to Mental Health Casual. I am Lucky and today I'm going to do a quick video, but before we get into that, I'll be in uh, San Jose for a little while, so uh, I won't be doing a video next Monday, but I'll be back on Friday. If you guys want to hear more of me, I'm still going to be doing my podcast, so I'll leave a link to that in the description box down below. But anyway, I wanted to talk to you guys about AA or Alcoholics Anonymous and the 12-step program. Now, I think there are a lot of different 12-step programs. Um, I've only ever heard of like the really mainstream one, which is typically very religious. Now, if you've been listening to my podcast or watching me, you know that I am religious as well. But I think sobriety is for everyone, not just those people who believe in a deity of some sort. I think that everybody should be welcome to be sober and we should always encourage that no matter what your beliefs are. That being said, I do think that for me, knowing that there's a creator of some sort guiding me and helping me out from, from above helps me out a lot. However, I never actually went through the typical AA formula. I didn't go through any program. I kind of just got so ashamed of myself that eventually I decided to not drink anymore. And for a lot of people, it's kind of the same. However, typically they'll go through a program afterwards. So my general thoughts on AA and pretty much any other program out there is pretty much the same opinion I have of people who do dieting programs. If it works for you and you're seeing results, then go ahead and stick to it no matter what it is. Now, of course, that comes with the caveat of the fact that maybe you should be seeing a or you should definitely be seeing a doctor along with that, because obviously if you're making like really extreme changes then you want somebody to be monitoring you and you know somebody who knows your 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 baseline health that way they know whether or not you're going too extreme or not and whether or not that's dangerous for you now in terms of aa i have heard a lot of great things about it going through church as long as i have i've definitely met people who have uh, gained a lot from aa and this isn't a video on me you know bashing the fact that they are religious or typically religious especially in the 12-step program there are a couple of steps that are pretty much only for uh, you know trying to find a creator and i have had a subreddit on my podcast where it's called atheist 12 steppers so it's people trying to find alternatives to aa or trying to get through certain steps that would otherwise uh, require a creator which are actually a couple of the main steps so i'm actually going to show you a couple of the steps that i'm talking about in particular so remember there are 12 steps here and these steps are kind of foundational for aa so if you guys want an alternative i've heard some good things this is mostly anecdotal but i've heard a lot about smart recovery as an alternative it's a little bit more science-based and instead of looking for a creator to help you out it's more looking within yourself which i think for me i had i did a little bit of both of that throughout my journey i was definitely a little bit more on the agnostic side when i had just gotten uh sober however i was starting to lean a little bit more towards uh, there being a god um after i got sober and after i'd seen all of this kind of suffering and after i'd i'd read the bible a little bit so maybe i'll do another video about smart recovery you know after this and once again this is a guy coming from the outside i've never done aa i've never done smart i kind of just winged it and i would actually mostly uh not recommend that for most people out there i think you should definitely have some type of system in place and one of the best things i like about aa is the fact that they have a sponsor or i like to call them mentors basically people who have been through the program and that can help you out throughout your uh throughout your journey in aa and give you some tips as you go through step by step here's a couple of uh steps in the 12-step program i won't be going through all of them just the ones that include god and maybe give you guys some alternatives to what you can do instead of those steps so step two of aa alcoholics anonymous believes that people struggling with alcohol use can benefit from believing in a greater power than themselves to recover those working the 12 steps of aa are free to choose whatever higher power works for them and in quotes here it says came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity now i think this is where the idea of of self-empowerment actually could help you out a lot instead of giving control over to god you can start to look within yourself and start to take control of your life i did a video a little while ago saying don't use your mental health as an excuse for the way you treat others and i think this would be a good place to start Quit using your alcoholism as an excuse for the way you treat others. Making sure that you end up taking responsibility for your actions 
it's a really big step so you know you should definitely have like some type of community behind you but ultimately if you do not believe in any kind of higher power or any type of god uh, one way that I like to look at spirituality is your relationship with the universe. And another way that I like to look at spirituality, if you do not like the idea of spiritual health, you can think of it as social health. How are your relationships with other people? Because, you know, when we talk about religion, one of the things that we talk about is we are all God's children. So your relationship with God's children is also your relationship with God to a certain degree. So when you think about social health, you can think about it in the same degree. How are my relationships? Oh my God, my relationships are falling apart over here because I was too drunk. You can translate a lot of this to more secular language if believing in a higher power goes against your moral code, which I know for some people it definitely does. So maybe instead of coming to believe there's a higher power and it can restore you to sanity, you yourself are pretty much the only one around you that can make the choice to try and gain your sanity back. Nobody else can make that decision for you. You're the one that ultimately has to make a lot of these decisions yourself. However, I just want to say in absence of a God, make sure that you still have a very strong community. I don't know where that might be, but if you have friends to confide in, if you have family members to confide in that want the best for you, that's another really big thing with community, making sure that you have family members that want the best for you, not just to see you fail and laugh at you. But anyway, that's step two right here. Step three of AA made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood God. In the third step of AA, a person consciously decides to turn their will over to a higher power of their understanding. So this step can kind of be replaced, and I, I kind of did this at some point, with this idea that you are such a small part of the universe. Now that doesn't mean you have to believe in some type of higher power, but if you look scientifically speaking at how big the universe is, you're such a small part of it, but in doing that, you also realize that you're part of something that is so much bigger than yourself. Whether you want to think about the circle of life or anything like that. I mean, we're part of something that's so huge. This world is just such a small part of the universe. So realizing that there are so many things that are out of your control in this big universe of ours is very liberating. You don't have to believe in a god to think that. So step six of AA. We're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. The alcoholic admits that they are ready to have their higher power remove the wrongs they listed in step four. So we skipped over step four, but it was basically just taking inventory of all the wrongs that you've done to other people and even to yourself. However, I did want to bring up this one because this was a very important step that I had to take that had nothing to do with religion, which was forgiving myself. Now, remember one thing, guys, we always tend to get this idea of forgiveness misconstrued with excusing things like, oh, I'm excusing this person. Like we use it very interchangeably for some reason, or people take it as being interchangeable. However, I want to read you guys once again, I think I've done this on this channel before the actual definition of forgiveness or forgive in this case. So the definition given to us from Oxford Dictionary of forgive is to quote, Stop feeling angry or resentful towards someone for an offense, flaw, or mistake, end quote. So it's basically just getting rid of the negative emotions that you have towards these things that you've done. It doesn't mean that you're excusing what you've done, but you also have to realize that there's not a lot you can do about past mistakes. So if you do have a defect of character, I don't know what it may be. Maybe you have a personality trait that gives you a stronger sense of justice and you just can't let things go and maybe that may have hurt you in the past, then... Forgive yourself, meaning don't excuse yourself for the fact that you maybe hurt somebody. That's obviously, that has to fall on your shoulders. However, take the negative stigma out of it. You made a mistake just like everybody else has. What are you going to do now? Do you want to mend that relationship? Do you want to continue going forward, but also keeping that in the back of your mind that you don't want this to be a continued pattern? So step seven of AA is kind of similar to step six. Humbly ask God to remove our shortcomings. Step seven of the 12 steps of AA is about humility. When a person is humble, they have the opportunity to gain new perspectives that support their recovery journey. So for me, religion helped me become humble because no matter what, God was always greater. However, you can do things as simple as maybe going to the gym uh, another thing that you can do is join martial arts. You start to realize that maybe you, there are people out there that are better than you, but you also learn to accept that fact, but to keep moving forward. That's something that everybody has to go through at some point. So humbling yourself can take many different forms. It does not just have to be a religious one. It doesn't have to be you getting beat up either. Um, just anything that maybe wears you down to a certain degree. It could be cardio. It could be lifting weights. It could be, a, I mean, listen, I go to the gym all the time and people are lifting way heavier weights than me and they're much smaller than me. And it really does help humble me to the fact that maybe 
I'm not as strong as them, but I can accept myself for all the defects that I have, which may be me not being as strong as I want to be, but it still gives me a focus on what I want to keep doing. So I'm going to sum up step 11. Basically, it's just the idea of meditation and prayer to keep constant contact with God. However, a lot of athletes will do this kind of mindful meditation, this idea of thinking about what they actually want to do in, in MMA. For example, a lot of athletes like to envision how the fight is going to go, how every little if I trip here, I'm going to do this. When they imagine things, it helps give them that mind muscle connection that we typically talk about in bodybuilding, but it's in pretty much anything that you do. But meditation is great for everybody. You do not have to be religious to meditate. Simply doing something like the Wim Hof method, which I'm not going to get into right now. I can do another video about that if you'd like. But Wim Hof breathing, you can find it on YouTube. It's totally free and it's pretty intense. So don't do it while you're driving or anything like that. But that's a really intense exercise that helped me a lot with my anxiety. And then step 12. Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we tried to carry this message to alcoholics and to practice these principles in all our affairs. This last one, I think you can go ahead and replace it with live by example. You living by example can help so many people. What I'm trying to do on this channel is trying to live by example, giving you guys an idea that there is a future for you just because you are an addict right now or you're dealing with some type of mental health uh, problems or complications right now doesn't mean it has to stop you from reaching your ultimate goals whatever they may be I found a lot of purpose in YouTube and podcasting but maybe you find your purpose in woodwork and doing something else like whatever it may be you can achieve what you want to do or at least achieve something meaningful which you can actually wake up every day and say I actually want to go do that thing and I believe by doing that I am paying it forward for the people who came before me that told me It'll be okay, Lucky. Just because you went through this very bad and tumultuous time does not mean it has to define you. So by practicing these principles, ultimately you're really helping a lot of people and everybody that you socialize with. When people end up seeing how successful you are or how centered you are, you'll be surprised at how many people want to copy that vibe when you end up walking into a room. And hey, if you ever get to the conversation about addiction and drug use or anything like that, then you can impart your knowledge on them. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. I just wanted to give you guys an alternative to some of these steps if you are going through AA right now and maybe you don't feel comfortable with a lot of the religious talk. Uh, once again, that's totally fine. But like I said, I'd probably go to something more like smart recovery or talk to your sponsor about maybe adjusting some of these things. Uh, I've heard some people say that their sponsors will not budge on the, some of these steps. So that's the only reason why I'm bringing you up some alternative steps, but either way, guys, remember sobriety is for everybody. No matter what you believe in, we all deserve to live a healthier life, no matter what that may look like. Remember guys, you can check out all things casual in the link tree in the description box down below. Also, if you'd like to email me, you can email me at mentalhealthcasual at gmail.com. Once again, guys, I will not be here on Monday, but I will be back on Friday with another video. I'm thinking about maybe doing my next video on the smart recovery process, doing a little research when I'm in uh, California, but let me know what you guys think. If you guys email me before then, I'll be happy to do any subject that you guys want. But as always, guys, don't forget to keep it casual. Hey guys, thanks for watching Mental Health Casual. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos.